let me introduce myself. I'm Sheila Blumen. I am an educator and a psychologist. Now I know I'm also a part of the Generation X. And yeah, you're learning every day something, right? And I happen to be the head of the psychology department at the Catholic University of Peru. So today we're going to talk about talent development as a turning point in social change. And let me introduce you, Kiari. Of course, this is not the real name, but the story is real. Kiari means moonlight in Quechua. So Kiari was born in the northern Andean uh, mountains in Peru. As you know, Peru is a South American country, the third largest country of South America. And of course, we have a beautiful geography. We have Amazon forest, we have Andean mountains where Machu Picchu is placed. And also we have a desertic coastal area that is splashed by the Pacific Ocean. But Kiari was born in a family of peasants whose native language was Quechua, which is a language spoken on the, on the Andean mountains. So Kiari had to walk along the mountains every day to get to school. Her parents could not allow to have a donkey or a llama for her to go to school, so she needed to walk. But Kiari was also part of the Peruvian community. In her case, she was a rural Andean girl. Okay, and that is important to know because that is the most vulnerable population of the country. So Peru is a highly centralized country where one third of its population live in Lima City. So everything happened in Lima City, not really in the Andean or in the forest, Amazon forest. And also Peru is an ethnic, linguistic, diverse country with more than 42 vernacular languages spoken on the Amazon region. But Kiyari wanted also to be an agent of change, but she belonged to the lowest social economic level in Peru. Not socioeconomic level A, not B, not C, not D, but E. So she didn't even have running water at home. So how could she become an agent of change in these conditions? When she was 15 years of age, opportunity knocked at her door. And she was invited to be part of the selection process for the course. The course were the residential programs for the high school academically gifted coming for poverty conditions. Right next year after 2008 that the norm for the academic talented students was given, the first residential school for the academically gifted and talented students were launched and currently we have 25 core schools nationwide. So Kiari went through the whole identification process, but she was afraid. Why? Because she was a rural Andean girl. So her possibilities for being part of the core were very little. Why? Because at that time, the inequities in the identification processes were not really fostering rural students to become part of the cores. It wasn't until 2020 that the government realized that there were some students coming from these schools, all the red schools here, spotted here, that were not really becoming candidates for the cores. So if these were schools for poor children, how come not every school was identifying or selecting children for coming to the course? And those children were identified and invited to take part of the selection process, but couldn't afford it. It's easier to come from Lima to Schiphol, Amsterdam, on a 12-hour flight than reaching from Lima to all these schools on a three or four day trip, going by plane, bus, llama or donkey, canoe, and walking. You see? So 
It could be seen as closer, but really, due to the geographical conditions, it's very far away. So, in 2020, cultural values, double exceptionality, and also the geographic location was addressed. They were all addressed, but it was in 2020. So when Kiari presented herself as a candidate, she didn't have too many options, really. But she succeeded, and she was one of the 7,651 students that got a place in the core. But not any core. It was the Lima core, okay? That was the most important core, actually. So you see, we have 25 cores nationwide, but she got a place because of the score she got on this identification program in the capital city which was very good for her. Just to let you know, these measures are always validated for the Peruvian population. And every year we have pilot studies and they go through all the psychometric processes in order to establish satisfactory discrimination between highly able students that are also her achievers along the four batteries that this involves. So Kiari got a place in the Lima Corps, but she was afraid of going there. Rural Andean girl, having to go far away from her family to an environment, a context that she didn't even know. But this was a once in a lifetime opportunity and she took it. She was very lucky also that her parents supported her because not every family supports that a girl, 15-year-old girl, would go to a residential school far away from home. And the core model was also a really, a very significant uh, support for her. Why? Because even though, oh, sorry, even though academic development and cognitive development were considered, they were also focused, and a, a big and significant focus, on psychological well-being, social emotional development, identity development. This identity development was very, very important for the parents. The main concern, I would say, for parents living in the Amazon region or Andean region is that their children will forget their origins. You see? So this identity process was very important and of course, physical health. Why? Coming from an environment without sanitary conditions, no running water, they needed to know if those children needed any you know, complementary vitamins or iron, and it's always, they always put supplementary vitamins in their food, because most of these children come with some malnutrition conditions. So, Gary went to the core, she made new friends, also uh, friends that had their same dreams, you know? They wanted to become somebody. They wanted to become an agent of change for their own towns, villages, societies, context. And she managed to finish the core. Core are high, high schools. So they're ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade in Peru. School year, uh, school um, training finishes in 11th grade. So she spent three years in the course, managed to finish them in a successful way, and was invited to the Young Scholar Program, what, for, to continue her college education. Thanks to this, she entered the rank number one university in the country, and she managed to continue through this umbrella of the Young Scholars Program, her education, and uh, she got not just financing support, but also 
tutoring program focused on talent development, and by the end of her studies, she got also mentoring for job placement. But Kiyari wanted to do something else. She didn't want to go, she didn't want to go just, you know, to work, but she wanted to keep on going on her studies. She got the opportunity to learn English, not just consolidating her Spanish, but learning English while she was at school. And at the university, she also learned French because she was thinking about going to France to continue her grad studies. But, and that then, um, she, of course, she applied to many universities in the world, French universities, and her advisor told her, why don't you also apply to the USA universities? And she got entrance to the top five universities in the US, and of course, the one that offers the, you know, the best benefits, and so she took them, and she is currently studying at Harvard University, Kennedy School. Why? Because she wants to support other girls to keep on going with their dreams. We all know that talent is universal, but opportunity is not. Dando has a wonderful keynote the other day, right? Talking about this, and she is here, and I'm so pleased that you're here. We know that opportunities are not. So we need to keep on going for providing these children, these youth, opportunities to make this a better world to live in for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you.